to talk to you about an RTV build. It's right here, right? It's looking at me. Let's get the wheels off. These wheel hub extenders are not the ones that I saw in the film. They're the ones that I could find. They are a 23 millimeter extension, 17 millimeter uh, wheel hub. This one's 12 to 17, 23 long. The ones that I think I saw in the movie were more like this. Hollow with a black nut that goes on them. I could possibly get it on. There we go. That's more like what it looks like. And it actually pins right on to the shaft. And then there's a little retaining washer that goes uh, around in, the, uh, in there to hold that pin in. My opinion, those are the ones that were used. They're the ones I'm gonna use on the uh, uh, RTV. One of the differences I noticed between the VXL and the uh, Stampede 4x4 was the control arm. Um, on the Stampede 4x4, you get a plastic control arm. So it looks like that. That's why I changed them because I thought they didn't look quite right. So I bought some cheapy blue ones off of eBay and painted them black and got them dirty. I mean, they're okay. Um, the ones that you get with the VXL, quite different. All right, shocks. On the shocks, I noticed what they had was a uh, lock washer with a nut. Now, I personally wouldn't use a lock washer with a nut to secure uh, the shock, but you know what? It seems to work. I've run this thing and it hasn't uh, had any problems. I would have used a nylon insert uh, nut, but this is what I saw in, in the movie uh, for theirs and that seems to work. Yeah, it really sticks on there, that lock washer. So you want to see what that looks like. There is the lock washer, M3, with a nut. Now, some folks were asking me uh, about the little insert that it said shock insert. Well, if you're wondering what that is, it's this tiny little one, and where it goes is in the head of the shock up here. So it goes in here so that the M3 screw fits snugly inside the head of the shock. Um, the reason why I had those is because some of them disappeared on me, so I thought, well, if they disappeared on me, they might disappear on you. You might as well have a file for them. We're gonna take off the sides. So, what about these two screws? What are they for? Well, ouch. Um, the front one, I don't know if you can see that. The front one, what I was able to do was when I had everything together, and uh, this one was lined up. I took a small like M2.5 drill and I drilled through the frame so that this one would then actually tap in through the frame. And I tapped it with an M3 uh, tap. I'll show it to you when I pull it apart. This one back here does not attach. One issue you can have though, if you haven't taken enough off the side of the frame here, this won't sit flush. It's a bit finicky. So you got to get it really, really close. And you can see here, it's very, very close, the uh, trimming of the frame. And we'll, we'll go over some of that later. Let's start by getting the aluminum off. 
Now these two screws just unscrew the aluminum. Oh, and I'll have to take the knob off because the knob will, uh, the knob goes right through the whole thing. Wow, these are, those are in there, man. So I think I've described these. They're uh, pan head uh, silver. I, now that I uh, think about it, it's in the text file all of the descriptions of the screws, so you're just getting a better look at them now. Now we're gonna have to pull this off. Um, this one, and uh, I did it with a resin printer because I like the results a little bit better. All right, is there another? Ah, there we go, second grub screws here. There. So we pull that one off. Now, why is it that the piece that goes in here is shaped so funny. Why is it shaped like a T? Well, when you're trying to put it in, if you've forgotten to put the knob on before you've put this together, you're never gonna get it in if it's got a big round head on it. So this very funny looking T will save your bacon if you forget to put it in and you can put it in or take it out after. Not that one. There we go. Now mine are a little bit longer than I wanted. You probably could use like a three to six millimeter. These are more like 12. It's because that's what I had in my shop at that day that I was putting this together. go loose and off so why are there four big holes here well it'd be really hard to bury those screws back there if you didn't have holes big enough to hold them so these uh, side cells attach to the aluminum panel not directly to this so you got to put these on first the design saves you a little bit of trouble so I'll pull these out and pull these out. Oh, this one doesn't do anything. This is the one that does. That screwed right into the frame. And then this side should, 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 and should come off. And there we go. Sides off. And you can see. The, um, this screw, very short, just for show. This one actually attaches uh, the, uh, the side into the frame and there's the screw hole. This was the screw hole that I did. Actually, I'm not sure which one it is that's the right screw hole. Um, this was the second time I had tried this. So, you know what, it is what it is. Oh, we're getting there. So let's take the other side off. Same stuff applies. This one, this screw here is, uh, you know, the hole is lined up when everything's in there. You drill a hole, you tap, and then you put that screw in. And this one is just for show. So let's get this guy. First, the nub. All right, I'm gonna take this off and I'll be right back. The unfortunate part about this side is you have to unscrew everything to get it uh, to get the aluminum off and what I've done is I've uh, attached the um, side to the frame under the aluminum so this side is a little more trouble to take off unless you make these screws really short mine are just a little too long but you know you can get uh, maybe get three millimeter screws
not great, huh? Hmm. Well, maybe that's just the uh, paint sticking it on or in the shoe polish and what not else. Yeah, not quite ready, this guy. Oh, there we go. All right, so that comes off. And then we've got three more screws to take out. Well, should be four. Um, I think I changed the design again since I did this one and there's two screws here. Make it a little more robust. Uh, that's this one, and then that's a different. And voila, the other side is up. All right. So we don't really have to take the connector off. It's uh, four M3 screws and lots of shoe polish on there. Um, the two screws that sit down there. Yes, some folks have uh, done like I have, and when you're putting it in, the, the pressure, I try and grab like this, and I apply the pressure with the palm of my hand to bring that in. Because if you don't, for some reason, um, we've had breakage of the... Uh, so the, the piece that's down here holding between the, the, the screw bulkhead, uh, it can break off if you're not careful doing this. Um, I've broken one off. So I'll get it down here. Oh, I'll unscrew these. And then I'll try and show you what I mean by pushing it in by when I take these right out. So I'll pull them right out. And these are a little longer. They're, uh, I'm see the, uh, they're 16s. Okay, M3 16s. Uh, I use the cap head. The reason I use the cap head is because it's bigger and uh, gives me a little more oomph. All right, so let's take a look. The box is, the box is sheer loose, huh? So we look inside, we see the holes are not quite lined up. Give it some pressure from down here. Get a screw in there. Wow, that's hard to see for you, I know. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. Bob actually is my uncle, so it's kind of cool that way. All right. So that's out. Some of the hardest screws to take out, or at least the most challenging for me, um, are the two screws that hold on this uh, shock support. So when I'm taking those out, I bring in the big guns. Nice flexible uh, extension. I can just get in there and uh, pull them out. Makes it a lot easier because I am aged. Don't see so good. Teens. All right, now they're off and this can come off. So one of the secrets to putting this on that's kind of important, um, you'll notice that they kind of don't fit together so well, but they do if you know the little secret of making sure you're um, okay, centered first off and you get it past these two points at the same time. So make sure that the, the edge lip here passes the box edge at the same time and then pull up and it'll pull out easily. So when you're putting it in, you want to put, the, you see there's a little divot made in there. I mean, this is really, really a tight fit. So goes in like that. And make sure that the back edge, the two back edges, this one here and this one here line up inside and then you'll click it in and then you got something that'll work there you go all right so and getting it off make sure that the front edges come out at the same time 
All right, so we got that off. So we got two screws here that hold on the front end, and you can see the placement of the servos here. They fit on the side. Um, if we were using a custom one of these and it went straight up the side, which is what I saw in the uh, in the book, the Ghostbusters uh, movie book, um, we wouldn't be able to mount our servos here. So the stock um, uh, shock tower is kind of important to have if you want to use the servos to actuate the doors. All right. The other thing that I do which is probably not a bad idea. Make sure when you're putting the wires in, run them through the center, or at least part of the center, or the left or right side of the shock. Um, what that'll prevent things from doing is having your wires fall out when you're trying to put things together. It'll be easier to, uh, to manage them. Here we go. The servo. Um, Emacs servos, they're metal gear. They're very sturdy. Man, these things, uh, they really kick butt. And you can see the clevis pin. The nice part about this is if you don't get this part exactly right, you can actually screw it in a couple of turns and then say, oh, okay, that's where it is. Screw it in a couple more turns. Yeah, that's okay, good. Now we got it right. All right. So that's the advantage of it. So these are the only... Um, M2 screws in the whole project. They're pretty tiny. You don't have to use M2 screws. I just happen to have uh, loads of um, metric screws um, for various reasons my 3D printers use them. Um, you can use anything you want. The, the holes are about 1.8 millimeters. So it gives you a little bit if you want to use like a, uh, a cutting thread, you can do that as well. Really, it just doesn't matter how you mount them, it's up to you. I just happen to use M2. All right, let's take a closer look at the servo. So servo arm, this one is one of the servo arms that comes with the uh, servo. It's a double-ended one. I cut one end off because the length is what I needed to get the throw you need to open the doors past a vertical so they will open a little bit past vertical and then close all the way. I cut one end off and enlarged the last hole. I just used a little drill bit made the hole a little bit bigger and uh, then the, the clevis pin will uh, fit in there and like I said these are 1.7 millimeter rods the originals so this is the original rod I used. I went way longer because I didn't know when I was designing it how long it was going to be. These are quite a bit too long. How long are they, you ask? Um, it looks to me like they're five and a half inches or... Uh, what is five and a half inches? Me, about 140 millimeters total. So that's a little long. Um, the other thing, there's a retaining nut on them. You can see the little retaining nut right here. I take that off. So I'm going to take this out, this rod, and then we're going to go over um, how long it is and the bend and what this end piece looks like. So it's an M3 brass um, grub screw. And, and I'll, I'll show you one. Hold on. Where are my M3 grub screws? So there's a hole in the grub screw on this side and a pointy bit on the other side. And what we do with this guy is um, file, once we get the length right, we file the end of it, we put it in. I, uh, I put this in my, um, uh, my soldering jig, you know, the arms that, uh, that hold everything for you. Um, put that in, put the solder into the brass first, and then I just shove the rod in. And once I see that there's flow, um, that the solder is flowing up the rod, then I uh, stop with the heat and pull it off. 
So after that, these things are generally too long. Um, you might be able to get a shorter one than I did. This is what I was able to find at the time I was looking. It's a little long. You can tell that the one that uh, I'm using is quite a bit shorter. Why? Well, because I filed it down. Length and shape. Well, there it is. It is longer than two inches. No one's bragging, don't worry. Let's see. So to the bend, let's get this right. To the bend, I've got 58 millimeters, 57.6. So let's call it 58 millimeters. And then after the bend, and I'll give you how much you need after the bend that includes what goes inside. I've got about six millimeters. You could probably, yeah, you could probably get away with six and a half, seven millimeters. You know, it's not, it's not the end of the earth. Um, and the reason it's not the end of the earth, you can see on this one, the threads go from here all the way down to here, which means when you're putting it in the, uh, in the, the clevis pin, you got a long, uh, lots of adjustment. And this bumper <laughs> is not as nice as the ones you will make. <laughs> um, this is an old cookie sheet. And it's what I had lying around the house uh, to get the shape right. I thought that that's what I would do. So the first try, it was too far forward. The second try, it's actually still a little too far forward. So the design that you have has it another... I think it's another three millimeters forward. And um, the, the shape is basically the same. And if you're wondering, how did you get a cookie sheet to look so terrible? This, um, all of this stuff uh, was um, blowtorch with some salt water. So in very thick salt water, torch, put it back in the water. And then this uh, rusty looking stuff is shoe polish. And then I uh, sprayed a uh, clear coat. What do you call that stuff? It's um, a satin, satin finish clear coat. So, because uh, one of the issues that you'll have on the metal is the salt and stuff that's stuck on here. You can rub it off otherwise. But this, yeah, it looks pretty good. Oh, something else to note. The shocks, all of them go to the outermost pin, uh, outermost hole. So all front and back. They go to the outermost hole. Now, why? Well, if you don't, you'll get the wrong angle on the shocks uh, with the uh, ghost trap. All right. Oh, no, we do have one more piece left. I didn't, I forgot that was on there. Well, you know what? Uh, call me lazy. Was gone. All right, the front, the front shock tower is the same as the back shock tower, or the back shock tower is the same as the front shock tower. Is what I should say. Parts. What parts do you need? Front shock tower for Traxxas, and this is a spare front shock tower, and there it is. It is a seven zero three nine two. Um. And when you get that on there, that's how you keep the level. The other part you're going to need, or the other parts you're going to need, are the same uh, shocks front and back. Because you will notice that the back shocks are a lot longer. And you'll end up with a canted um, uh, ghost trap otherwise. 